All right, here we go. I have updated uh, the course curriculum with documents. So um, as we're still waiting for supplies to come in, looks like they might be in th this week. Um, we're still focusing on 2D and fleshing out your character, your tridimensional character analysis, describing the character and your mood boards, different reference boards. So I, I kind of condensed everything in here. So the creative writing section, the first couple weeks, and then uh, for character design and construction, we're really talking about uh, core processes uh, used at almost every studio. It's a pretty standard, which cover uh, the thumbnailing techniques to get you into a unique design. So let me just go through this uh, document and I'm gonna add to this as we go through the semester. This should be pretty similar to what you're gonna turn in for your final. So you're gonna have one single document uh, that's a PowerPoint or PDF and so you can look at this for reference and you can always copy and paste it and, and swap it out and put your own images in and change the text to suit your own needs. So you're welcome to do that. You have my permission. Uh, so the example I'm gonna use here is going to be, um, we're gonna get into the value constructive 3D shapes, pattern and color today uh, and talk a little bit more about uh, storytelling poses and I'm using this example here of the uh, myconid, which is the um, myco meaning fungus or mushroom, myconid people, originally from the old first edition Dungeon Dragons game in the 70s, uh, pen and ink style. So that's what this original one's from. And so I uh, have three different reference boards that we listed here. So the ones we were looking at were uh, something of a, uh, real world reference or the what it is. So these are mushroom people. So um, I, I'm kind of foregoing the human anatomy. Of course, you guys have some really good resources, handouts for that. These are the different types of mushrooms. So you have the morel, the polyplore. These are the morels here. The polyplores are like the discus ones that grow off the sides typically. And then you have the uh, fly agaric, which are the um, kind of typical red topped with the little, um, Kind of white breadcrumb bumps on there. Also had a style reference board. So for this one, originally, um, this is like an example used for many years over different classes over the years. So this particular style board would be a combination of Castle Crashers uh, in terms of the graphical style and readability as a side scroller and Limbo, which is like a film noir. I also threw in um, American McGee's Alice. And so uh, this particular character in defining, I came up with a bunch of different types of myconid creatures. So um, particular character we're going to do is going to be just mush. I call them mush, world of mush. And so physical traits. Um, one of the things you can think about when you're doing these is to settle on a couple. I think three is the magic number a lot of studios use, but you can always expand on that. Um, identifiable traits that are immediately recognizable. So for this particular character, I'm going to go with a big, wide, floppy kind of mushroom head, no brainer. Um, large glowing eyes will be added in there. And then some uh, long, gnarly kind of rooty like feet. So those would be the three traits I'm going to go with on this. And um, from the first video that we posted, we had uh, looking at different farmers, collectors, explorers, different types of packs and wands that he might have. And then to further evolve this into a 3D style, I went also some other, and you're welcome to do more of these, right? You don't have to just do one. You could do lots and lots of these because you'll use them forever. You can always go back to these style guides that you've made for yourself and create a library, not just in your head, but a digital library for yourself. So uh, who this character is, remember when you do the who part, you can use any image. It could be a uh, photo, book cover, movie, still from a shot from a, a film, doesn't matter. So I took uh, Yoda's hut, is thinking of some like grimy, dirty kind of subterranean dweller, uh, the hermit tarot card of, of kind of uh, the old hermit kind of wizened explorer type that are um, kind of recluse. And then I had watched the film Pig recently. The Nicolas Cage is pretty entertaining. So it caught me off guard. If you guys haven't seen Pig yet, definitely recommend it. So from the truffle pig, uh, you know, dig, being out into the, in the wild digging for these uh, magical spores or, um, you know, what would a myconid farmer um, 
kind of personality trait be like? So I had the truffle pig um, farmer on here. And I even had another character idea where they actually had like this little myconid like pig creature that was their sniffer that would go out and find these um, magical spores and truffles. Um, for the style in terms of um, visual style, um, so remember the what is one, the who and the style should be the three minimum you want to do for any kind of character. Uh, I also had in here the uh, visual style for to modify this more 3D. So I was looking at um, the cover art for Tool, which is uh, Adam Jones and Meets Myers, some others. There's also uh, one of my favorite cyberpunk movies, City of the Lost Children, had this kind of a futuristic, uh, surreal cyberpunk style to it. And looking at different repeatable patterns, color gradients, and kind of grungy, I might uh, might explore punching in some uh, more industrial metallic cybernetic parts, but I think I might stick with like more biosynthetic um, cyber cybernetic parts. So we'll see how that goes. Um, some recent other recent concepts I found uh, included uh, a Kickstarter, it's a couple of years now, but this Kickstarter went up for doing um, Myconid Heroes and the Corrupted Myconid. So it had a different type of rotting, but I love the pencil drawings on here. So Groot would be another obvious, you know, some kind of rooty veg vegetative type creature. So the other one of the other reasons I like to use this type of character analysis is that it uh, frees me up from having to do any hardcore human anatomy, which, you know, takes weeks and weeks and months out of the curriculum. So we could just jump straight into any kind of character that you want to make, not just a human uh, type character. So yeah, I found these drawings to be great. So I always, you know, put the credit, you know, Navarro, like any, any artist you're getting reference inspiration from, don't be shy. You know, we emulate those things that we enjoy. So you're, you're looking for unique designs, but you're also want to be upfront about, you know, where you're drawing inspiration from and any, any kind of, um, reference uh, is helpful to get your imagination going. You could also just do it raw, but I find the reference collecting process if you're on a project is, is crucial. So this is from the first video. So the first steps were the line of action, the silhouette, and then what I'm gonna get in today is the value, depth, uh, and doing pattern and color. Should be a five actually, I separated out pattern and color. But we're gonna use the storytelling post. So I'm gonna get into the silhouette here for you guys and give you some actual step-by-steps. So uh, with that in mind, I had, uh, attempt at making like a cute style more pixar style mush character uh over the years and like something a little more wispy like spindly almost uh stick like hands and arms like i, I had a, even a one sample where he had no arms at all where he was just a body head and legs but i opted to kind of keep the arms on there so they could actually grab and carry things and then of course uh, gravitate typically back towards uh a more creepy kind of gnarly um scary type of uh bus character or something would be a little more uh creepy i guess so this is just one way to do the lineups for your characters and to explore you want to explore right you don't want to just settle on a design from square one that that's not true creativity you're not just like make up one design and you're done um, most of the conceptual designs take many many hours and dozens if not hundreds of iterations before they settle in so this is the first one uh, pen and ink, I enjoy because uh, you can't erase it. You can digitally, of course, but you know, swagger style. You know, even like a simpler. If I was doing like a two D side scroller, I had gone down. This is what I was talking about, where they uh, a lot of the designs had no arms. But it's great. Explore it. See if you know it works. Maybe I go back and use some of the armless creatures or more squiggly or gnarly rooted ones as different characters in the world. So we're world building, right? Um, so. The poses, this is more for from the animation school, but the storytelling poses are good to know. So we'll give you the principles of animation so that you know, um, you, you get to know those by heart, what the principles are. So what I like to do is combine these together with game animation poses. So that way you're not just looking at um, film, but you're looking at what are the main poses that might be um, most frequently viewed in a game. A lot of those uh, we're using as the idle what is their posture? What is their attitude and idle? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is a popular example of that. And then this is from a platformer. So we're going to switch this from a 2D to a 3D platformer using Unreal Engine. And that way you're going to have a lot of anticipation and big leaps and controlled falls or drops, surprise. Uh, the other ones you'd have here might be an attack 
or um, hit reaction, getting, you know, being hit or being affected by something. And uh, the silhouette here is what we're going to get into today. So I did some of this already live. So I'm going to show you now uh, the digital part of this. So we're going to look at the weight, the volume, the balance, the anatomy, using gradients and shadows and grounding the character. And then we're going to get into color. I've provided on here. These will all be filled in as we go on, uh, you know, week by week and during the semester. Um, but if you're looking at color, uh, color.adobe.com is just crucial to re remind people that it's there, that you can load any image into the Adobe uh, website. There's a color wheel. So you can go in here and you can kind of pick and choose different color uh, combinations. You can go from um, analogous to uh, monochrome. Here's your typical triad. You can make it, you know, more or less colorful or saturated. And this is a really wonderful way to choose color palettes. And of course, even more powerful uh, to add to this, you know, exploration here is to go in and upload your own uh, file. So if I get in here to the create. Let me get out of the color wheel here for a second. And uh, what you can do is you can extract a theme. So you can go in here and you can drag and drop your image. So I'm just going to go into my uh, file folder. Here's um, here's one here. So like Comet Mother. Or here's the mushrooms that I looked at from the one of my favorites, the original film, um, Fantasia. My probably my favorite digi Disney film. There you go. So here's just a simple color palette of like some midnight blues and light blue uh, shadowy regions with the brighter red tops and kind of desaturate little sparkly colors and from that you can even uh, go in here and maybe take away a little bit more from the paper aspect of it and you can actually pick and choose where you want to sample from and that'll give you the color swatches here so for color this pretty much solves uh, for most people to get started with at least how to do color um, from you know, absolutely having zero um, idea maybe to start with. So let's get started with this. Um, I provided a link to the brushes. So if you go up here to brushes, so this is gonna be a little bit of a power lecture on Photoshop as well. So you wanna uh, rewatch this and take notes. The windows button up here is your brushes is F5. So I'll call out the shortcut keys. So I'm gonna show you how to arrange your images in Photoshop and how to kind of saturate, desaturate the colors out. So let's start off with, um, oh, that's for the other class for level design. Let's get into uh, one of the first things you're gonna deal with, which is going to be um, scanning and bringing in your pictures and making and cleaning them up so that they show well right so you want to get that skill from this class for sure so i'm going to load this into would be a typical image so this is a picture i took just from my desk now the main thing is that you don't have like a cast shuttle from your arm or the camera on there and that uh, you're able to get a nice flat picture so you're not going to skew the character so let's go through these uh this process of how to arrange and scan and, and our uh, film lineup and use this image. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, you have the image here so you can rotate and move this stuff around. So here's your image rotation. So I'm gonna go 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then almost always what you're gonna do with these, uh, I used a red animation pencil. I didn't even um, get a chance yet with this one to go back with the blue and choose my overlapping lines. You can just see where the overlapping lines, what's in front of what is a little darker. You see the belly here is in front of the wrist that the line is darker there. So just reminding you on your line work to go back in and, and darken and, and kind of select where you want your edges to be. So one of the first things we're gonna do is duplicate this layer. To duplicate the layer, you can hit Control J. That is gonna automatically make a copy of your layer. And you can also grab a layer and just drag it down here to new layer and that will also uh, make a copy for you. Um, to make a new empty layer, it's Control Shift N, or you can just go down here to the new layer button. That'll give you a new empty layer, and I'm going to fill it with white or black. Um, each of these main buttons on the side here has the shortcut key. If you hover over the top, so move is V, M marquee, L is lasso, W is the magic wand tool. So these first four uh, buttons on here, you want to have this toolbar written down at least on a one pager of notes. Um, down here at the bottom, you have your uh, default swatches. X switches back and forth from foreground to midground, and D is the default. So if I go in here, if I click and drag, I can select like a red, 
like that. And then, or what I, I, it looks like I missed it a little bit. There we go. There's a more red. So I have these two colors is what's I, I sampled from here. I just clicked and dragged from the swatch onto the canvas and that gave me that color. And I had escaped to get out of that. If you want to get back to default black, white, hit D for default. And then if I want to fill with a foreground or background color into the empty layer, I could do alt delete to fill with the foreground and control delete to fill with the background. So that's control shift N to make a new layer that's empty, uh, control J to replicate a layer. So basically what I'm doing is making a, uh, an empty white layer behind this one to uh, line my characters up on. And then I made a copy of my original scan. So I, at least I can go back and get the original with control J, clicking on the layer, hitting control J will replicate that layer, make a copy of it. So I'll undo that. Okay, so with this layer, uh, whatever images you've put into your file, you want to start improving your process and how you show your images. So I'm going to hit Control U. Let me just actually show you where these are. So here's your filters. I'm sorry. Um, should I get into uh, image adjustments? Excuse me. So Control L is levels. Control M curves. This is how you're going to bring out the brights and darken the darks. Control U is your saturation, hue saturation. So those are three of the main ones we're going to use today. So we're going to level and curve out the brights and darks, and we're going to use hue saturation to get rid of any color. So Control U will bring up a hue saturation. So what I can do here is desaturate and make it all pure black and white. And then Control L is going to give you your levels. Levels, if you grab the white point, is going to push and get rid of a lot of the mid white tones. And then if you grab the far left side, the dark black point is going to darken the dark. And then the middle one is going to push it towards one or the other. All right. So you usually want to do this with almost any hand drawn image uh, that you snapshot and bring in to your portfolio or for the class uh, demo to show off your work, you want to do this process. If I want to darken these lines a bit more, I can duplicate the layer again, control J. And you have layer styles here. These should be in most applications. Multiply is usually going to darken the darks uh, down and, and multiply, make it even darker for the one below it. So there's before, there's a duplicated layer with multiply on afterwards. If I want to drop this layer down to the one below it, control E will merge a layer down below. Let me hit control Z and undo that. So right clicking, merging down will basically take this layer and merge it into the layer below it. So that's control E. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Control E, I'll do one more, control U. I'm gonna get rid of the saturation. I'm gonna hit control M this time instead of control L. I'm gonna brighten out some of the mid gray tones and I'm gonna darken out the darkest dark tones in here and try and get that nice and, cl and clean as much as I can. There you go. And you see the far, if you get way over there, you're going to really uh, start burning into some of those darks. Okay, that should be good though. So I'm going to take this down. I'm going to uh, marquee select it. Remember, so these, all these uh, buttons here can be used together. These first three, the marquee, the lasso, and the magic wand are all selection tools, right? So if you want to add to selection shift, you want to take away its alt. So I'm going to go to marquee select and click and drag across. There we go. So it's going to mark each like so. Control C to copy. Go back over to my. Uh, let me close my level design one. Go back to this uh, one here. I'm going to go to the top layer. Control Shift N and Control V to paste. So I have this now into the same file, right? And I can hit Control L again if I want to further get rid of the lights and grab that dark point if I want to darken those darks. And then the middle one, slide left to right to get rid of a lot of that midtone graininess. There we go. And then use the V, the very first one, right, to move. So this is how you move and arrange. Uh, careful your auto select, whichever layer you're on, it will it will hop automatically if you have auto select on with your move. And got some music on here. Let me just tone that down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm in here. If I do auto select now, this it makes it a little easier. I can move this around. And then this is how you assemble things, right? So you go into your file, you level it, you desaturate it or use levels and curves, use your marquee select or your lasso tool. You can go in here and I can lasso select as well. If I wanted to maybe just grab an arm or if I just wanted to grab the feet, if I just wanted to grab the hands or if I just want to grab the body, whatever. And control C and control V over to this one. Now um, from this one, what I can do now is I can, I can kind of 
allow myself a little bit more space to arrange this with the red, with the other uh, pictures I have. So I go in here and I select what I want. Control X will cut, will cut it and Control V will paste. So now I have, and then V to move. So I'll move that here, go back to this little leftovers here and just hit the delete key and that'll delete that layer. So there we go. So now I can start going in and arranging these and control T is my most powerful uh, shortcut key that's not on the main tool right here. Control T is your um, free transformation tool, edit uh, free transform. And within control T now I can uh, click and move this. I can rescale it. If I wanna do it uh, asymmetrically, if I wanna keep it symmetrical, hold down shift, right? I can rotate it. I can also right click in here. I can skew, distort, I can even warp and move this around, which is very useful to use the warp tool. If I wanna escape out of that, I just hit escape. So let me hit control T again, move this up to the side up here. And I'm gonna save this original size because this is more of like a cartoony type mesh compared to this guy down here. You'll see I have my auto select on whichever layer. So this is my mesh 3D model that I'm kind of running with right now. And I've also brought in uh, an exploration of the mushroom queen that I had in, with the size comparison. Um, let me turn those off for a minute and show you the silhouette study that I have started for these two. So I just want to take these and make a silhouette out of them and do uh, what's called a profile or a lineup comparison. So let me click on this guy. I can kind of go in here and make sure the back of their heels is about the same. There we go. And I can always hide that. So now I can go to these different um, images here and I can copy and paste any of my favorites. So let's get a couple more of these. So I like this one here a lot. So I'll go to my lasso tool and I'll select around this one here and hit control C, go back up to my top layer. And if I wanna put it in a new layer, just go down here, click new layer, control V, paste it in there and V to move and I'll bring that up here. So now that's kind of, you can see the, the white that's around that. If I wanna get rid of any of the white background, you can turn everything off. And I could go in and make that a little bit tighter on the selection. So if I wanna have these separated, I control X, control V, and then V to move around, go back to this layer again, go back to my lasso tool, grab it, control X, control V, and move that around. Go back to this little leftover pixels and just hit delete key. So now I've given myself a nice little method of moving all these guys around. Let me um, take this one here and I'm gonna go down here and make a group. So you can go to a new layer if you want and right click on that and do new group. Um, where is my group? Oh, group from layers, there we go. And I'll call C originals. Okay, so I want to go back and um, do something with these. So I'm going to grab most of these guys and I'm going to drag them into my originals group. There we go. And same thing with this guy. So before I do, I'll do a control J and I'll take the original down here. And then these little guys here should be all right. And then here's the silhouette for the mushroom queen and the, and the mush 3D model, this guy here. So you can see I've already kind of cleaned up around the edges. So I'm gonna take these two here. I'm gonna take that whole silhouette, drag it to new layer copy. So it makes a whole copy of that entire folder. And let's see here, let me turn off the auto select for a minute. And so if I could drag that whole, so yeah, I just made a whole copy of that and I can drag that into the original as well. So this means if I mess up or if I wanna go back and do a different iteration, I can always do that. Um, with the originals and it gives me a little bit more uh, flexibility. So there's all the original stuff there. It's kind of hidden away. And let's see, maybe I didn't get the queen in this one. So let me duplicate those as well. Control J, drag into the originals and then originals is off. Okay, so these guys are ready to go. So let's give this a shot. So um, first one I'm gonna do, go back to auto select with my move tool. So I did make a copy of this guy. I believe he's down here, yep down there turn off all the other ones okay so let's make a silhouette of this guy first so i'm going to hit my space bar with my thumb that's my hand tool to move over and then z to zoom in and out just slide left to right the space bar here is the hand tool right there the grabber 
And the Zoom tool is right up here above. I don't even know. Yeah, that's the little Zoom copy there. So H is hand, it's gonna move. Z is gonna zoom back and forth. So what I can do now is I can draw straight on this with all the pixels, but I wanna show you guys how to use the brushes here. So the brushes again is uh, Windows F5. Go to brush uh, brushes, the brush settings. There F5. And within the brush settings, what you can do is uh, go to brushes and you should have your general brushes here. And what I do is go up here and you want to uh, load in new brush group or you want to append the default. I usually just go to import brushes. So import the brushes and put them into a new group. So I did that already. And what I'm given here are the ones from the Adobe website, which are the dry media brushes. So you have the Kyle pencil brushes. So if I go to B and let me make sure my tablet settings are working here. There we go. Yeah, so I can go in here and I can fill this in. Let me zoom in on that. And again, B is your brush tool, control Z. Here's the charcoal pencil. So if I was gonna get like a rougher edge on there. Uh, and then down here's the wet media brushes, uh, special effects brushes. And we should have the, there's ink, oil. Where did the watercolor brushes go? I had a whole bunch of watercolor brushes in there. Oh, oh, here we go. So this is the new Photoshop brush of 2022 from February. Okay, my bad. So here's the custom ones I've made over the years, uh, Blatch brushes. Here's the bronze bokeh. So let's try this first set here under PS brushes 2022 is one gigabyte file you could download. This is what I was looking for. Here's your watercolors. So these are just going to be super cool to play with the watercolor brushes. Uh, here's your manga brushes pack. Again, this is from the um, Adobe website for brushes if you get your um, accounts going. Letters, here's rakes or splatter brushes. So there's a whole bunch of great brushes in here. I'm just gonna stick to a couple of really simple ones today just to focus on silhouette. So rather than um, brush directly into this paper here, I'm gonna do a new layer above it. So I'm gonna do a new blank layer. And then right above it, I'm gonna go to my B, to my brush tool. I'm gonna check out the dry medium here. I'm gonna go with the, let's see here. I'll try this dry brush first. There we go. And you see it does like a nice little streak behind it. And what you can do now is go into your brush settings and you wanna turn on your brush shape dynamics, which is set to your pen pressure. So if I press really lightly, it's gonna just barely push down the line. If I press harder, it's gonna go wider. So you see I go thin to thick and I can fill this in. Now, if you're dealing with a, um, Silhouette, a lot of times you want to kind of keep it really solid. So sometimes I'll just go straight in with my uh, lasso brush and I'll just kind of quickly, you know, get started here. Uh, man, my hands all messed up today. There we go. And then I could do the uh, alt delete to fill with black. Control D to deselect, go back in here with the um, arm and just kind of swooshing back and forth around. There we go. Again, alt delete will fill with the foreground color. And there we go. And I've already kind of got like this little interesting shape that's a bit different from the pen, original pencil that I drew, which is what you want to do. You want to explore, right? So let me get back in here to my brush tool, the presets. And let's get something with a little bit, uh, maybe a sharper edge to it. So I don't want to have quite so much cleanup. I want to get a little bit clean. Uh, you know, not quite such a rough edge. Here's another dry, big, let's see if this one, no, it's even worse. <laughs> I mean, I could sit in here and do a whole hour just playing with this stuff. So I'm gonna try and avoid doing, let's see what some of the manga brushes do. Let's try that first manga basic. There goes, that just like a basic line that's gonna go thin to thick, perfect. And then your bracket keys next to letter P, it's gonna go bigger and smaller. So now I can get in here and get a nice big one and I can kind of block in this edge here and block in the shoulder and let me zoom back. And if, uh, if I wanna just focus on the silhouette at this point now, I just turn off that image and go in here and go to the brush tool and add that in. So I'm gonna play with um, maybe how, how much this droops or how much there's like an underpinning back behind or under uh, these little fans or fins underneath the mushroom caps. I can also play with those like long, gnarly um, kind of root-like feet we talked about. 
right? So I'm already kind of thinking of my main design motifs I'm doing here. So he's gonna look just about nothing like um, the original, right? And just a nice big brush here, there we go. He's got a little bit more buffed, but I'm not, it's not what I'm going for. I'm gonna use the eraser tool and carve that back down. Okay, so once I do this, um, now this is the best part, one of the best parts of digital is when I go to the erase tool, I can now, E was the erase tool, I can now pick from the dry media um, different eraser tools and you'll see that there's a whole bunch of brushes to choose from, right? So there we go, there's my edge tool. So I'm still in the eraser tool. And now what you can't really do in the real world with your pen and ink, definitely not with your pen and ink, but you can with maybe a gouache, but not with watercolors either or markers, is you can use your eraser as an effective drawing tool just as much as positive. So your positive negative shape is what your silhouette is all about. So I'm kind of sharpening this up a little bit and I can switch from E to B bracket key in and that these are kind of the main, oh wow, that's really messy. Mm -hmm. So I can get a different one here. Try the same, oh, it's the same dry media brush. Let's go back to the manga basic. So I'm just gonna use the manga basic since a lot of you guys like mangas, I think as much if not more than I do. So I'm just switching from E, uh, B to E, E is erasing. Let's see what, which one did I switch in the E? Looks like in the E I had, which brush is being used right now? It's showing. Yeah, just get like a nice solid edge on there. And whatever, if you're using Procreate or Psy or whatever, it's, it's the same thing. You just want to have a nice solid edge and then um, something to add a positive image. Oh, well, this is blur. Oh, it's really blurring it up nicely. That's cool. Not what I want to do right now, though. It's the dry media. Oh, that's a basic smudge. Nice. You could smudge it up like that and blur it, it's kind of like I did um, by hand on the first video. I could edge this out and kind of, especially on down here in the shadow, and create some, uh, and I could pull down with the smudge. And then go back in with the um, erase tool and kind of sharpen up, make that bigger. And it's all about playing with the shape, right? You're trying to make something original. You're trying to make something unique. You're trying to not make the same old character that we all do, especially when we're uh, still newer. Um, I'm one to talk here is this mushroom character. I think this is one of my first projects in school from almost 20 years ago, like, you know, who's gonna do like a, you know, mushroom forest, of course it's fun, right? So I'm gonna play with that. And if you if you find these ones you like, you should be able to rename, delete or export and kind of um, make new groups of your favorite brushes so that you know which ones you're going to um, gravitate towards and use the most. Because I'm giving you a gigabyte worth of brushes, it could become overwhelming very quickly. So I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed too much, but I do think it's exciting to give you access to all these right away and then just see what happens. And because some of you are gonna really dig this and go crazy and make all kinds of brushes. So there you can kind of see what I'm doing now, kind of defining, maybe leaving um, maybe little, almost like little, um, you know, these, these could be part of his costume. They could be part of his anatomy. I don't know yet, maybe make it, I had a, primary design too, where it's forearms or upper arm and upper leg were actually smaller than the um, forearm and the lower leg. It's kind of like, a, almost like a conical uh, design motif, right? And then this, this is a bit different than the base made his fingers are kind of curled here. And you can explore uh, handheld items. You can explore um, if I wanted to um, give them like, you know, a, um, a satchel or a cape or maybe like a little uh, poncho. So I'm just kind of adding positive space and then I'm cutting back um, on the negative space. So if I want to on this guy, um, those eyes, so it's the cap, the big gnarly feet, And then uh, the eyes, right? Uh, I, I'll usually ground my characters, uh, and this is a good kind of um, standard practice. Just put a little shadow there, and let's try that dry medium smudge, and then I can kind of smudge out and give uh, 
give the ground a little bit of shadow, kind of smudging that around a little bit. And that, that works well with both traditional and digital. Go back to my regular brush and kind of redefine where those toes, those kind of long, gnarly, rooty toes actually are. Okay, so that's it for this one. Um, I'm going to go into my marquee tool and show you. So you have the square marquee. If you click over it, you also have a circular elliptical marquee. And get this to stay there. Go. Uh, if you want to filter any of these tools that have a little arrow, whatever the letter is, just hold shift and that letter and that will filter through. So right now I have the elliptical. If I hold shift and M, it's going to go back to square, shift and M back to elliptical. So go elliptical, do an eyeball in there. So there's one eyeball. And then if I want to add to that, hold down shift and do another one. As I'm dragging, I can, and hold shift, I can also do space bar to move it around. There we go. And now I can actually paint back in there using the brush tool again, switching to white member X, which is from foreground to background. And I can kind of paint in his big glowing eyeballs and control D to deselect and zoom out. So there's like a unique little character pose. Uh, go back to V to move him. So there's one silhouette, right? So I just kind of explored pushing the feet, the head, the eyes on there a little bit, gave him a little bit of an attitude. Um, I'll go to this one next here where he's jumping. So I'll take this little guy here. And for this one, I'm gonna go in um, and I'm going to actually go control U and I'm going to uh, darken, oops, let me um, undo that, sorry. Let me uh, do levels first, control L or, or control M for curves. I'm gonna push the lights and I really darken the darks on this guy all the way over like that, okay? And then control U, I wanna desaturate, make sure there isn't any like funky colors and it's just dealing with black and white for now. Go back to erase and now I can go in around this little silhouette that I like and I can erase away um, parts of this. Now, if what I'm looking at for this game, or this idea is as a platformer, 3D platformer, the jump pose is going to be critical. Like he's going to be doing a lot of jumping and bouncing on the tops of the mushrooms in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image, that particular storytelling uh, action game pose that I like, and I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to duplicate it and do a couple of iterations just off this one particular little ink pose. So, that, so, you know, you're free to do that. You don't have to do 50 different ones. You could, if you do five or 10 and then you, um, have a couple that you really like, take the couple that you really like and then make iterations and, and versions on that. And that's, you know, the iterative process. That's how you will continue to push and improve upon your designs. I could also use the lasso tool if I wanted to uh, accelerate this and I could just grab whole areas like that, hit delete. Um, you could also use the magic wand tool and you can go in here and then see if I got all that white and hit delete. Um, just be careful with magic wand when it's really dirty like this, because it's going to it could pick up other stuff that maybe you didn't want to pick up and you might end up having to do a lot of cleanup work. I think I deleted, you can see the pixels through, I deleted some of the stuff in there. No big deal. Delete. Oops. Careful, I delete the whole thing. Here we go, delete. And then go back to my erase tool and just erase away. And just being clean, um, dirty, I'm not being clean, excuse me, to, to, while I'm cleaning this up a little bit. Go back into the my brush tool. Uh, make sure I'm on black. Remember D is default, black and white. X switches back and forth, foreground, background. And I'm assuming I'm going fast here on purpose. I'm assuming that you uh, all have you know the luxury since I'm recording these of hitting pause and rewatching this as much as you feel is needed. So um, when you go to 3D sculpt this, you're gonna feel the difference of how much. Uh, looser you'll be how much liber how liberating it is to um not feel like you have to make like a beautiful finished illustration right off the bat which is like not a good way to work for an original character if you're redoing the same thing over and over again that's a character you've explored time and time again or you're doing a fan art then sure maybe you could just take an image that's already there but you're not going to get a job typically copying doing fan art or copying someone's work, unless you're trying to work at Blizzard 
or something like that, where they literally want you to just be like total fanboy fangirl and not do much originality. Um, you know, they have, actually have explicit instructions to, you know, show them how much you know of their game world and all that good stuff. So I'm going to zoom in a little tighter here. Say, uh, which, you know, usually if I'm dealing with the little thumbnail size one, you wouldn't do this too much, but I'm just kind of using the digital. One, one nice thing about digital is that you have the ability to go in here and um, zoom in and out very easily. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit before I make a copy of this guy. So I have it kind of flipping up as he's jumping. Maybe back here too. Go back here and maybe flip this side up a little bit. There we go. And I can see the little Rudy toes hanging off there. That's good. Um, I am assuming this leg is um, closer. This arm should be closer. This one's farther away. Or wait, I'm sorry. Um, uh, juxtapose. That's arms farther. This arm's closer. This leg's closer. This leg's farther. This would be in front of us. So. Therefore, this arm here should not be the bigger arm. It should be the smaller of the two arms, right? That's far away. And then this one here, I can kind of make sure that it's reading as being the closer to us. And I could go in here and kind of get this. Overlap done a little bit more as well. I'm just switching between E and B a lot, just using black and white. Nothing, nothing fancy going on here yet. Okay. Maybe his toes kind of reach out. Maybe he's got like, you know, how Groot does when he's got these kind of long, tenderly like feet. And maybe his uh, fingers, maybe he's, uh, instead of having the fist, maybe he'll have the little odd four-fingered hand dangling. Okay, that's good enough for now. So I'm gonna um, just go to V, make sure it's on selection mode, drag it up here, it's fine. Uh, Control J, replicate it. Control J, replicate it again. Did zoom in here. Now let's look at, um, so that really the main thing here is you're carving, you're using the erase tool in digital format and it's super powerful to carve and they do call it modeling. You're actually modeling and molding and carving back into your drawing while you do this. So maybe I'll make his head a little smaller, do some variation on this guy. You can also do control T, right click to the warp tool and you could really play around with this character, look how fun that is, right? It's just like smudging. And hit enter. Okay, so let's look at a value and pattern. So value, if you just use three values, um, if you wanna lock your value into the um, image that you're working on, what I would suggest you do is do, hold on control, and tap on the icon in the layer. And that'll what that'll do is that'll automatically select and lock in um, whatever's on that layer for you. So you don't accidentally go outside of the lines. It's a good way to trap your lines. So this is a lot of inkers do this. And let's see if anyone's joining us. You guys are all shy. No one wants to jump in during class. Let's see, resources. I think you can't open it. Not in the Peralta. Okay, thank you for that. I'll make sure and fix that. Thanks. I'll fix the brush download. I'm not sure why that's not working. Um, okay, so back over into Photoshop. So now what I'm going to do, uh, let me control D to deselect and control tap the icon to reselect that. So now what you want to do is you want to pick three values. Uh, medium, lighter, and darker value to go with your black and white. So three, four, five value tones is plenty. You don't need any more than that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go a little bit uh, lighter than pure black. So and I'm just going to control D. Let me just smudge my smudge marks up here at the top. So go up here, make a nice big brush. I'm going to go medium, right? 
uh, alt will do the eyedropper when you're in the brush tool alt pick that's my pure black alt tap to do white or off white and then alt tap you can also go in here and then click on the foreground color and let's go like more of a medium gray and brush that in and then back into the foreground again and we'll go to a lighter gray there we go so these five values these five values what i can do is uh, alt and pick from them and put them onto my silhouette as i'm going um so let me control tap on the icon again i'm sorry alt tap control tap there we go it looks like i put all the colors on the same layer that's okay um tab will hide your interface so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, medium first. So I'll go into medium and I'll just kind of smear this across the top, just like that. And alt to get the darker one if I want to kind of curl that back forward again. And then alt tab into the darker gray and kind of put that around the back side here. Brush a little smaller. Go back here and then just put a little bit underneath the leg here. Actually, I'll do the uh, lighter tone up on the top, not underneath. And what I'm doing is I'm just starting to give it 3D form, 3D shape. So this automatically starts giving it a little bit more 3D form. Maybe he's got little um, eyebrows here. Then alt tab the dark to get underneath there. You, I, I'm using this at a 100% opacity. You can go lighter. There we go. And just kind of maybe do a, another shot here. Maybe, maybe highlight the brim, this edge, maybe the edges of his front of his forearm. And this will kind of flow into pattern as well, a little bit as we're going. Sloppy at that one. But if I hit tab again, that'll bring this up. And then I could get into, these are solid uh, lines. What would be nice is to have when it kind of fades off a bit. So if I go into more of a dry one, um, this is going to, whoops, let's try this one, scraper. Ooh, these are interesting. I'm trying to get one that's gonna do a fade. Well, let me turn the fade on myself. Here's a smudge. So you could go here and you could rub and smudge these together. There we go. And what's happening is uh, since I'm locked into the edge, um, all the solid lines are kind of disappearing, but within the, the locked edge of the silhouette. There we go. And this is a fun way to work. I'll go back to the regular brush. And I think I just nuked the edge. I think it really is a strong brush though. There we go. Go back to the smudge. Maybe make the smudge a bit smaller because the smudge will pull it, did pull the pixels away from the edge, which is not what I wanted on that particular. I don't want to lose the limbs, so to speak. There we go. Yeah, pretty cool. And dry media brush. Try this one again. There it goes. It's a little bit too dirty. Go back to the manga basic. Just scroll down here and there's just tons and tons and tons of brushes to play with. So have fun with this. Um, you definitely can start getting here and playing with shape and pattern. So any of these types of patterns, let's say if I wanted to do this one here, fill diagonal, go to the lighter color, alt tab on there. Now what I can do is I can go in here and I can kind of see what types of little mushroomy, zipatomi type patterns I might want to put on the body. You know, and I haven't even looked at my reference yet. Maybe he's got little spots on his belly and up his neck. Definitely on the top, right? There we go. And you can blend these together. Zoom in. And crazy lines. What do those do? Ooh, that was really powerful. Short burst. Um, whenever you see the brush really big like that, just bracket down small. And then this is going to stay upright. 
you want to go into your brush settings, you can have the shape dynamics follow the anger fo uh, angle, jitter follow the direction. So that way, um, whoops, it was on direction already. There we go. So if you if you change the direction, it's going to follow the direction of your pen. Sometimes you don't want that on, so you could just turn that off, and that will leave it straight across. And I'll talk more about the brushes, but you know we're going to be sculpting mostly this semester, so. And this is just a little primer for you guys to have fun with, you know, to open up your imagination and, and doodle in 2D while you are sculpting your characters. I do like this little burst thingy. Let's see if it follows my brush stroke. It does. Cool. So let's go like bright gray with it and see what that does. <laughs> okay, forward and backward. Nice. And maybe a little darker, like redefine the inside of the face there. And I am just totally goofing on this guy with the pattern. And control D to deselect the pixels there. And then I can always go back in here, go to my move brush. Remember, these little color swatches are on the same layer. So if I move this, it's going to get all of them. Easy way to do that L, lasso, grab your little guy or thing or girl, whatever it is, and cut it and control V, control X and control V paste, move it over here. And I can even just do a whole set of eyeballs and whatnot. There we go. Just kind of toning down and adding actually more texture, but some darker texture. Maybe go lighter, use the alt key, bring some of that lighter color back in again. There we go. Um, if you want to go um, not so opaque the whole time inside your brush settings, uh, which you'll want to turn on there under shape dynamics is pen pressure for the opacity, which is under transfer, which is this makes no sense for 99% of the population. Transfer opacity jitter is one of the most useful. So shape dynamics, pen pressure size jitter. What that means is if I go and press, it's going to jitter or move as I go. Um, Lighter is going to go small, and as I go harder, it's going to go bigger. If I turn on transfer opacity jitter to pen pressure as well, you'll see it changes the dynamic down here. And now if I go lightly, it's going to go less trend, less opaque, and then harder is going to go more opaque, and then lighter is going to go light, um, less opaque again. All right, so you want to play around with the uh, shape dynamics, um, pen pressure for size angle jitter to the direction helps a lot. It actually helps the pattern follow the direction of the pen. And then opacity jitter will um, make it go more translucent the lighter you press as well as smaller, right? And that's maybe hard to see against the checkerboard. There we go. And then I love this smudge brush up here. So if I scroll back up, some great smudge brushes, but the Kyle's dry media, basic smudge. There we go. Now I can get in here and I can really kind of smush these together and get a nice kind of blending my character. And maybe, you know, he has got like a little pollen cloud Whoa. when he jumps. Maybe he's got like his little Mario cloud. So I could just go right here and grab the lasso tool, grab that cloud, cut, I'm in the right layer, yep, and go underneath him and can paste a new layer. And now he's got this little cloud that he kind of kicks up in the air when he's jumping. And uh, going to, back to my iconic portions of this character, is like iconic parts were going to be the eyes. So let me go back into here and just go back to the standard um, mango brush. There's the uh, basic and get a really nice light color. Z zooming back and forth, space bar to move. And let's get that lighter color up here. B is my brush. While I'm in the brush, we'll hold down Alt, pick a color. And I can come back in here and we can give him some different shaped eyes. I don't know, we'll do like a more of a triangle. 
shaped eye. There we go. And then of course I can go back in there and grab a darker color. Try that again. Get like even pure black and I can go in here and you know, you can have pupils, whatever. Go back to pure white. Alt tap the white. There you go. And those of you doing the anime eyes, there's tons of tutorials out there. If you wanted to, you can get in there and like really play around with that. When I'm alt tabbing the uh, eye drop to select off the image, just wasn't doing exactly what I wanted. Maybe give him a little chin, give him a little belly. <clears throat> okay, so that is playing with uh, the silhouette, um, playing with value to give them some 3D depth. <laughs> Doesn't really look very good, but it's all good. Um, and, you know, if you blend it, that the value here, this is your typical uh, graphics uh, drawing exercise that you'll have a lot more. You know, lighter, the surface you could do is five tone, but I just find like a three tone simple one here. Um, experiment with the brushes because some of these might turn out wonky like this one, but some might turn out really good. You might have some awesome um experiments from it let's see what other ones we had um oh yeah we saw the hands and the eyes the legs and the limbs that one up there let's grab this little guy right here and do him next okay so for this one let's do some color and so i'll grab the value brush i'll go to b and rather than doing it a 100% um, solid on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity down. That's with the number keys on the board. So if I just hit the five key, you see opacity hits to 50. If I hit eight, it goes to 80. One goes to 10. Zero goes back to 100. So if I hit five for 50 and I go in here and go to my basic manga brush, and there's a basic rough, and I just try and um, ooh, let me go back down maybe to, all the way down to 30. That's still really, that's solid. Oh, it's doing the flow, not the opacity on the, I hate it when it does that. So I want the opacity to be lower. There we go. There we go. And that, that will uh, leave some of the ink that I did on there and let me um, darken. So whatever works for you and your different 3D apps. So I'm just gonna darken in some of this part, I can go back with my erase tool and clean up around the edges. And this time I'm gonna leave a little bit more of the ink. I like the uh, Tombow pens a lot. That's your, that's your watercolor pens, right? There we go. There's a little feet dangling off. And so a little cleanup here, a lot of, you know, a little negative shape by once I get, um, done cleaning it up a bit and I, same as the other one i'm going to leave his little wiry arms i'm going to make a copy of this and have multiple versions to fart around with see what you know other types of mushroom creatures that i can come up with because in our document we're going to do color here next um you know looking at the reference you know these guys there's so many types to choose from um you could you know elders and big and fat thin tall um mixed with other creatures you know undead evil good ones magical ones whatever so i could just take that and just run with it if i'm doing a whole if i'm doing a world building exercise for a film tv series or game you might have a whole cast of characters you know this type these types of designs. And um, this this flows very well with world design. This is like part of the exercise, which I'll do with level design and, and model kit building. There we go. Okay, so let me go back to my brush tool and let me fill in some of the lighter parts there. And I can always go back to E and clean up some of this. Before I start altering it too much, though, we want to make a copy. All right, so you got to hopefully remember that key by now. So make a copy, which is Control J, V to move. 
spacebar to move the whole canvas, and then V click drag to pull that. And you can see what, what I have there to clean up, right? It's a bit messy. So I should have maybe turned that white background off first so I can see the checkerboard behind it. But, you know, just lasso select around. I'll hit the delete key, make sure I'm on the right layer. There we go. And the layering, um, the newer you guys, the newer students, you're so used to layers now. It's like an industry standard for all the different creative apps. It's kind of great. So you guys have no problem figuring this stuff out. The same techniques on your chosen application should have a pretty easy time if you're, if not, you're not already doing this already. I'm sure a lot of you are already doing this, these same techniques. There we go. So turn that about the V and let's give them some color. So in order to do color on this guy, I'll do um, control click, which uh, locks my selection on there. I'll do a new layer. And from this now I can go into my um, color palette. So I have a little mushroom queen that I sampled off here, go to my brush tool, switch the layer, which is above it, it's empty to color. down there okay and now if i uh, go to my eyedropper and i pick say this little uh, violet ish color i can go in here and i can fill this in pretty quickly that color again it's really messy really fast all good no problem and then if i wanted to actually put that down i hit Control e will drop it down to the layer below it and then I can actually do some more solid color in here with this and blank this in. You see my opacity is still lower. You got to remember when you leave your opacity down low, sometimes you'll forget. There we go. So now I'm actually kind of filling this in. And it's going opaque over the top of the black, kind of like if you put gouache over a watercolor. Or if you're doing acrylic or oils. Okay, so now I can get in here and play with color palettes. So let's go back to our cooler for Adobe for color themes, right? So here's a little spectrum to play around with. I, I can easily take this. You can uh, save or export these, download these. But uh, I'm just going to kind of um, do it the quick and easy way. I'm just going to hit print screen and go in here and hit uh, control N for new document. It's gonna automatically put my whole screen to the clipboard, control V to paste it in, C to crop and crop down in there, hit enter. And now I have this entire color palette just copied and pasted straight into a document. So whoop. now what I can do is uh, marquee select that. So again, I just hit print screen and copied and pasted this. Um, oh, control D, shift M to get back to marquee selection. And not worry about numbers right now. I'm just kind of jamming real fast on there. There we go. So I copied and pasted that into this document. And you see it's not that different of a color palette. I guess there's more blues than the original one that I had in there. And I don't even need that anymore. I'll just close it. Don't need it. Oh. And control T again. My free transform I can grab. If I need to constrain it so it's not skewing, just hold down shift, it'll match the proportions. And I'm just kind of pulling this color strip down. So what you can do is make several color strips like this for your characters. Um, if I want to brush this in and not totally cover, I can actually change my brush mode as well to multiply darken or color or difference or hard light, whatever. So I'll just change the color, hold down alt, tap on this red and now I can go in here and if I paint on the cap, it's gonna kind of bleed that color into the cap. There we go. And now I'm trying to preserve some of those darker lines to um, give it some holding lines, give it some more shape, kind of capture that, that movement. Now, avoid the tendency to put the same color everywhere, right? Like the hands and the feet and the arms and legs, look at your animals, look at any 
type of um, reference, and you'll see that animals have different colors on their bellies, their upper arm, lower arm, underneath, uh, down by the feet. I'm just going to drop down the opacity even more. There we go. And just kind of give him a little bit of a highlight on his face here, in the under parts. There we go. And then I'll go with this darker blue down here. And I'll add that to say the um, forearm up to the elbow and maybe the upper thigh region on down. Then maybe there's like almost like a root like line that goes down to the toe for a couple of these guys. Alt tap to color drop, go back in there and then get that other darker color and maybe go back to 100% opacity and maybe go back to normal mode again. And this is a lot I'm showing you, but I am, you know, giving this to you for perpetuity to look at later in your studies. Yeah, I'm not expecting you guys to do all of this at all for this week. These are just ideas you can incorporate use them as you will. You do want to explore color. We are going to paint our sculptures, which is really fun. And so, you know, one arm, this leg's in front of the other leg. So make sure that the line goes in front and I can always color drop off these, this uh, darkish, almost uh, reddish black color to kind of redefine some of the lines and maybe um, add a concept where strange. Um, maybe his eyes are kind of up in here. There we go. Do some white. And just do some dots in there. It should pop out nicely. Let's see, is my eraser tool even working? Let's see if this guy's working. Oh, I have my colors on a different pot on a different layer. Okay, so this will happen to you. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so just drop that down, um, control E, drop it, and then zoom back, marquee select, grab your color strip, control X, control V, move it out. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so that's your lesson on silhouette and just a tiny bit on pattern, play with all the brushes, and then using color. Again, you know, train make colors different, different parts of a character, especially a costume. If they're the same everywhere, it's like kind of a rookie move people are aware of. Um, you can also use your value, right, to define 3D form and shape. So that's really done more here in the rendering. The highlighted parts are going to be coming more towards you and the darkened parts are going away. You can also do like a reflected shadow, but you don't have to do that in something that's this quick. So um, before I wrap this up, let's see how we're doing on time. Oh, it's four o'clock. All right, let's grab uh, the main mush here. This is the model, 3D model that I'm actually make uh, have made already. I have already 3D modeled and UV mapped this guy. Same with this character. This is an actual um, 3D model rendering from ZBrush. So uh, she still needs uh, a costume. And like we just talked about color variants, there's just like one solid shader. I just barely shaded in the crown. A bit with the moral mushroom, so um, she definitely needs uh, a full color swatch pass in order to make this interesting. So I'll put that up there as your color swatches. Here's our value swatches. There's our little guy here. <laughs> That's fun. There's his little dust cloud. Okay, so let's do this guy here. So I'm going to transform him down. Enter, and then this one I already cleaned up real good, so I know it works. So Control J, replicate them over. And now I can go in here and um, do a layer on top. So just add a new layer above it, put it the blend mode to color. Make sure that I'm gonna work on this one first. So let's put that layer above him. 
control tap. So remember, control tap, the thumbnail is going to lock in and select whatever's on that layer only. So that way, if I go B to the color layer, I can now go with some whatever crazy color combinations. I want. Let's do like a light blue. All right, there we go. So color, nice big brush. And I'm just going to kind of do a quick fill in there. Look at that. It's pretty wild, right? Here we go. And then X to swap foreground background, maybe color select off that, and then maybe push it more towards the green palettes. And we'll do like a, we'll do like a green starting from like as upper form down the side a little bit, and then maybe in just the thigh region, and maybe someone has chest here, abdomen. There we go. Go in here, color select again. Let's push it up more towards the darker blue. So of course um, you could have this um, in your cooler in the um, I'm sorry color adobe.com you could have your color palettes picked out as well. Um, I could drop the opacity down here and do some a little lighter on the edges. You see it's so light there that um, the color is not really blending down. So what I could just take the original, go control U, and I can darken the whole guy a bit. There we go. And that'll give me a little more flexibility to add some light. Um, the last two things to mention on here, if I go D to default, X for white swapping foreground background, um, is that if you want to add shadows, use multiply. And if you want to lighten, you're going to use um, your screen. So let me just show you guys that for a minute. So I'm just on light. Oh, I'm directly in the model there. Whoopsie. Meant to be up here. It's all good. Zoom in. And he does need some more 3D shape, I realize. Um, but what I'd like to do here is um, give him a little color stripe. So I'll go Control Shift N or New Layer. This is going to be, I'll call this my shadow for dark. Then another layer, and we'll do uh, light. Okay. I can spell dark. Okay, so dark is going to be on multiply to darken without destroying what's underneath. And light is going to be set to uh, soft light or over. I'm sorry, uh, I said screen, huh? Um, well, between screens, overlay and soft light, you get like a variety. So let me just kind of show you the differences. So there's, um, we'll do the dark one first. So I'll just go to dark and let's do a nice pattern on him. So let me go back to my brush tool here and come on. Oh, if you get locked in this, just hit escape. It's pretty annoying um, that it locks in like that. A lot of times you don't want it to. And then hit B, back to brush. And I'm just going to do like a little, almost like tribal pattern you know, the wild mushroom tribal uh, markings, whatever. Or maybe it's just a marking of his natural markings that are natural to his group. I don't know. And it, it opacity's way down to like 11 right now. Let me crank that up. There we go. I didn't quite want to do There we go. That's a little stronger. So I found myself repeating the pattern a bit too much there. So let me zoom in. And let me just kind of think about, remember ghosting? So maybe make some of these stripes like kind of uh, follow the shape and, and twist around and maybe going you know, up into like vein-like lines in here. There we go, that's fun. And I almost like the lighter one I just did there more, but it's all good. There we go. Yeah, nice. Okay, and then maybe we'll do some uh, spots on his belly. So I'll go to white, go back to the lighter one, and I'll just do some like dots under belly. So now it's getting almost uh, frog like, all right? Which is kind of cool. So if I do like 10 of these, I'm going to be pretty happy with how it turns out. In most cases, I'm going to get 
a good um, expiration, good result. Um, same thing uh, as before, you can always use your eraser and delete. So go back to dark, go back to the eraser tool and I'll kind of erase away. And I have it on that rough eraser still. So let me switch out of that. Um, not the manga sketch eraser. <laughs> I think is edge. I'll try that one. There we go. And I can always lower the opacity down. Damn. There we go. So these are a little strong, so I can just kind of erase away that solid line. You could also just lower the opacity of that whole layer, but I'm just kind of going for it with the eraser here a little bit. Go back to my brush tool to the lower opacity and let's continue some of those lines. Oops. I'll white. So I'm on the dark one, right? So I want to play with that a little bit. Let's see here. I had like a little flip kind of up going on there. I'm having fun with this guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, if if this goes onto the 3D model, like painting this on th in 3D is uh, going to be really easy having this little concept to play with already. Like super, like I'm already liking this. Like he has no mouth, right? just like a little. I haven't decided how these things eat or any of that stuff yet. Um, might go back to the polka dot on the light layer, which isn't coming through very well. I have it on soft light. I think screen is what I wanted. Yeah, screen or um, overlay. There's overlay and screen's a little too strong. I think overlay is what we want. And then I can zoom in here a little bit. Oops. Go back to 100%, there we go, okay, yeah. And we do like a couple little almost like freckles and go up here to the top and really. Now, if they're uh, at an angle, you want a more of an ellipse than a solid circle, right? So maybe go back and erase some of that out. We put a couple more down in his feet. A little almost tree frog ish, maybe the if you and you could do uh, play with subsurface scattering with the light like refracting, reflecting through. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff we could do here. I'll do a little highlight. There we go. Look at that. It's coming out a bit better. Like that. Whoa, way too bright. Way back down to like 10%. There we go. Now I can kind of, now I'm using it really as a highlighter, right? Okay, so let's call that guy done. So there's one. I spent maybe a little more time on him than I wanted to. But that is the demo for this week. Uh, I'm going to do one more that's going to actually involve the clay. So let me hit stop here and we'll come back with another one.